Yeah, I really love the simplicity um, of the life that I've been introduced to through the Balance View training. And um, to see that my life just gets simpler and simpler. And um, it used to seem so complicated. So complicated because there was always something that needed fixing. There was always something that needed to be put in place before I could relax or before I could feel satisfied or complete or like everything was kind of going well. And, um, and when I look back now, I can see that um, I never actually arrived at that place where I could completely relax or where I felt that everything was going just brilliantly. Or even if I did arrive for a short period at that sense, there was, it, it never lasted. And so being introduced to the nature of mind and just the understanding that all of my thoughts, emotions and experiences had the same fundamental property or quality of just being um, the dynamic energy of open intelligence, that all of them appeared spontaneously, they were noticed for a little bit, and then they self-released naturally without me needing to do anything, like, um, like a, a mist evaporating in the air. And that actually, that what I was looking for, the sense of completion or satisfaction or fulfillment, was to be found in just allowing everything to be as it was for a short moment. Just relaxing the need to do anything with any of the um, with any of the data, with any of the thoughts, emotions, or experiences, to stop chasing after some imagined future goal where I was going to find what I was looking for. It was the, the, the hamster wheel, just feeling that I needed to, to run faster, to do more, to have better thoughts, to be um, physically fitter, to um, have more money, to, you know, just there was always something in the future that when I arrived there, then everything will be okay. And seeing that more and more clearly, um, and it even goes down to, okay, you, you know, once the train arrives, then, you know, then, then it'll all be okay, and getting on the train, and all right, once the train gets to the station, then it'll all be okay, or, you know, or once I've got in the cab, then it'll be fine, and once I'm at the house that I'm going to, then it'll, and it's just, it's never ending, and it's, it, for me, it was the definition of suffering, you know, never actually arriving at where I wanted to go. Always feeling that, um, and often it was a physical um, sensation of, I need to be in a different place. And once I get to that other place, then I'll be okay, because I, I just feel a bit uncomfortable with where I am now. And um, that led to a lot of moving around. <laughs> and... Um, so to see all of that clearly and then to discover that there's a solution, that there's a different way that I can use my intelligence, that I can approach life. And in each short moment of recognizing the wide open expanse of my mind, of intelligence, and just to introduce myself to that, and you can do that right now, if you just stop thinking, just for a moment, And, and notice what remains. There's an alertness, there's an intelligence, there's something that's aware of the next thought when that arises. And that's open intelligence. And it's always there. It never goes anywhere. And the way that I discovered that was by repeating these short moments of, of just a relaxing mind and body and allowing the flow of data to be just whatever it was. And whenever I did that, it was like this, um, this rush to get somewhere, this rush to achieve something so that I could relax and be comfortable. It, it, it just ended it, immediately with whatever was going on, wherever I was. And to discover that I could actually relax and be comfortable um, when the train was late, when I couldn't find a cab, when um, I was feeling lonely, when I was um, feeling physically uncomfortable. And that more and more this pervasive sense of openness and ease um, was just obviously available to me. And that introduction and that recognition to and of the nature of mind, um, although it was incredibly profound and, um, and I 
kind of quickly recognized that this was the information or the knowledge that I'd always been looking for, that recognition slipped away almost as, almost as quickly as it was recognized. And so it was so powerful and important to discover that there was this support network. There was the free media on the website that I, I could just plug into whenever I wanted to, and it would just remind me in a really gentle, easygoing way that, okay, look, instead of trying to get somewhere and achieve some imagined goal or state of mind or particular sensation in the body or emotional state, why don't you just stop and recognize open intelligence right now with the present moment perception, with the current data stream? Like, like right now. And that reminder was always so, so welcome. You know, there was never a, a moment when I've been um, reminded to recognize open intelligence where it hasn't been a huge relief and opened up insights and understanding into myself and into other people and the nature of reality that um, hasn't been so, um, so, so magical and beyond anything that I could have um, believed was possible for me in my life. And so that just continues on and I see that the sense of um, the sense of benefit within all data is something that opens up as well. So with um, negative data and afflictive states, and those are always things that I did my best to avoid, um, and they come in all kinds of shapes and colors and flavors, and, and I was just thinking about the question about physical um, sensations, and at the moment I'm kind of healthy, but um, it's interesting, as soon as I focus on myself as being, you know, this, this thing here, there's an awkwardness, there's a tension, there's a, a, a self, um, a self-concern that um, even if I'm fit and healthy, well, what do you look like? You know, how, how do I appear to other people? Oh, my God. You know, what, what am I going to do? Oh, I need to go to the gym. Oh, I haven't been to the gym in ages. Oh, you know, immediately there's something wrong. And, um, but nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. It's just the way that I choose to use my intelligence. And instead of collapsing into these descriptions, I can use these descriptions and the collapse into them as a reminder just to rest naturally for a short moment. And that tension's just lifted and who cares how long it was since I went to the gym. It's... Um, and in terms of the ups and downs, what I see there is that becoming clearer and clearer on that mechanism in myself and seeing that, um, that, that there's such tenderness with myself when I do experience negativity now. And I know that there's this incredible support network that just empowers me to allow that to be as it is. And that can seem so challenging because it, it just feels so wrong. But the beauty of the practice of short moments is just for an instant I can allow that to be as it is. I can contact a trainer that will just remind me that I can allow it to be as it is. I can spend time with the community and it's just so supportive to be around other people that are not buying into all of that way of using our energy and our time and our speech and indulging and avoiding and replacing data, but are, are actually practicing allowing everything to be as it is. And then from that, what I see is that's, that's the birth of real compassion and real understanding. Um, and it starts with myself. I have to start with taking responsibility for recognizing my own data as open intelligence, as this dynamic energy of open intelligence. But then immediately that allows me um, deep compassion and understanding and insight into what, what's going on for everybody. And so when I see that going on for people that are close to me, friends and family, it, it, it can be incredibly painful. But it is only by me taking responsibility for my data that I open up to really seeing how I can best support them and how I can, um, it, sometimes in a very practical way, it may also be that the best support would be um, introducing them to the four mainstays and to balanced view. But that, that wisdom and that clarity comes from relying on open intelligence. Amidst the flow of that data, amidst the flow of the, the, the pain and suffering that you can see going on in other people. And um, 
it's incredible to see that just opens up more and more. And that all that's found in open intelligence is this indivisible expanse of, of perfect benefit, inclusive of all data, um, positive, negative, and neutral. And much to my surprise, I often find that I learn the most and have the most powerful insights from the negative or afflictive data. Those are the ones that have the most juice, the most, um, the most potency in there. Because all, when the data are positive, it's just great. It's easy to allow them to be as they are. But the negative ones are so um, packed full of beneficial insight, even if it feels challenging at the time. And because I've seen that before with certain difficult situations or thoughts or emotions, then I know that this is... That there's something um, that can be opened up within that negative data stream that will be of benefit to all, including myself. And I've seen that again and again and again. And that gives me great courage and great um, motivation just to continue when things are challenging. And then I find that there is this stability. There is this um, spontaneous ability to see what will be of most benefit to all in that particular time, place, and circumstance. And to see that coming about in my own life and you know, being just a, an ordinary, normal person, but discovering this capacity for compassion and wisdom and understanding and um, being able to care and support people in a way that I had no idea was possible, that for me is just, um, it's just priceless. You know, that, that I can discover that capacity within myself like everybody can. And that is just amazing value of this training. Um, so just to continue on one moment at a time, one day at a time, showing up to the, the, the support that's available, everything unfolds in such an effortless way, even if sometimes the data can be all over the place and waiting for the right set of data um, so that I can answer an email. Yeah, I would be waiting months. So I have guidelines or, or I can set practical things like I will respond to all emails within 24 hours or at least do my best to do that. And that's great because that means that whether I feel like answering it or not, when it comes to 23 hours, I answer it. <laughs> and so there can be really helpful things. And of course, things can happen and maybe on occasion that I, I go beyond that. But I can be relaxed about that too. But I can have beneficial guidelines that can support me in a practical way. And it's great to consider how those can work for you too.